Welcome to another one of our conversations here with Dan, and we're glad that you're tuning in and joining and sending in questions, and we have another one of those questions to cover today, Dan. Okay. So, it's a, it's kind of all over the place because I've heard it from multiple people, and so we're going to boil it down to... It's generally a question about who makes the decisions and maybe how the leadership is structured of congregations. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it came in a couple of ways. The first one was, can you have like men's meetings to guide the direction of your church? And another one was, if you're in a small congregation uh, that doesn't have elders yet, is it scriptural to have deacons kind of running and making decisions and appointing those deacons when you don't have elders as an oversight. So there's a couple of pieces there, and which way you want to run with this? Um, first of all, there are some assumptions in the question that are from our culture. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we have a cultural assumption um, about... Um, who makes the decisions in the church. And that comes from a long history of uh, uh, denominational church hierarchy, mm. as well as um, our, our traditions in the church. Certainly in the New Testament, uh, we have full grown churches who have been there for a while, mm -hmm. who had elders and deacons, Philippians 1 verse 1, uh, it, talks about the church at Philippi with its overseers and deacons. Right. Uh, in Acts 14, 22 and 23, after Paul had worked in the churches of uh, Galatia, which were the churches at Lystra, Derbe, Iconium, and Antioch of Pisidia, for about 14 years, hmm. he uh, finally appointed elders in each church. We don't have any mention there of deacons, though... <clears throat> Um, the word deacon simply means a servant. Right. And they were specially appointed people who uh, accepted certain ministry responsibilities. Yeah. And, of course, we have characteristics of those in 1 Timothy 3, the deacons. So we know that the deacons were servants in particular areas of ministry, but there's no indication that deacons had any kind of a church-wide decision-making role. Uh, the deacons um, certainly were free to decide to do what they were going to do in their particular ministry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. For example, in Acts 6, there were seven servants in one ministry, the right. um, ministry of the feeding of the widows, Acts 6, 1 through 6. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, today we would be frustrated with, well, if there were seven deacons there, which one of them was in charge? <laughs> yeah, how'd they get anything done? That really wasn't the problem. They were servants who had agreed to take care of this issue, and they just had to get together and figure it out, I guess. Sure. And we don't have a lot of those <clears throat> nuts and bolts pieces. We don't, yeah. and, but the apostles, who were the de facto spiritual leaders, they said it's not right that we should ignore the ministry of the Word mm. to serve tables. So there are yeah. some people that are in the, have the gifts and are in the position to be teaching and preaching and ministering the Word that don't need to be so bogged down in, in the, the more mundane things that they can't do what God really wants them to do. So yeah. this was you know, one of the functions of, of uh, what we would call uh, deacons. Now, uh, the question I think came, <clears throat> if a church doesn't have elders, um, could they have deacons? We don't have any scriptural re uh, record of that. Okay. However, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, the church at Corinth was a church which we believe did not have any elders. But Paul asked the people there to submit to those who were spiritual people as leaders. Verse 15 and 16, if you would there, Jed. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 15, and 16. You know that the household of Stephanus was, were the first converts in Achaia, and they devoted themselves to the service of the saints. I urge you, brothers, to submit to such as these and to everyone who joins in the work and labors in it. Now notice, 
I urge you, brothers, in, in, the, in the last uh, verse there, to submit to such as these. Mm -hmm. Now he says, the household of Stephanus, and to everyone that labors and works together in the work of the Lord. See, so what does that say to us about who leads when there are no elders? Well, those spiritually minded people who are involved in the work of the Lord. Would that include women? Um, I think it would because in this, sec in this section, <clears throat> he's not really talking about people who are exercising authority over other people. He's talking about imitating an example, mm. following a pattern of behavior, yeah. submitting yourself in the sense that you look up to those people and you imitate what they're doing and you try to do what they're doing because of their example. It's very similar <clears throat> excuse me, to um, Hebrews 13 verse 7, which is about leaders in general, and we're not, you know, we're not sure exactly who those included. Mm -hmm. But uh, remember, though, remember your leaders, men who spoke to you the word of God and considering the outcome of their lives, imitate their faith. Yeah. So, so would it be fair <clears throat> when you're reading something like this to say that there are probably churches out there, and this may have been one of those type churches, mm -hmm. where there aren't necessarily spiritually mature enough people to become an elder, or maybe they don't meet a qualification for mm -hmm. one reason or another, but naturally in a group of believers there will be people that you can kind of look at that they're obviously trying to get there, and they're setting an example for the rest of the body. Right, and, and those people, <clears throat> like the household of Stephanus, would hopefully say, come on, let's yeah. do whatever. And, and they would be wise, and I'm not speaking from, from Scripture here necessarily. Well, there may be one passage that would inform us, but they would be wise to include the people of the congregation in, in what they are proposing to do and get the input of the people of the congregation and reach some kind of a consensus. Yeah. Now, many people have church-wide meetings if they, if they don't have elders where mm -hmm. they gather some people and there may be uh, three or four men that, that gather the whole church together and say, you know, this is our idea, this is what we'd like to do, is everybody on board with this? And yeah. they let everybody have input, mm. even including the women, you know. Sure. <clears throat> we really don't have very much of, of uh, a biblical information about how to, how to function as far as that, uh, except certainly we know that the Word of God is the guide and you look to spiritual people like Stephanus and his household. Um, one passage I mentioned that might inform us a little bit, <clears throat> even the apostles, pardon me, when they were uh, trying to fill the gap of the ministry to feed the Grecian widows, you know, right? Um, <clears throat> they said to the church, look out from among yourselves, <clears throat> pardon me, and choose seven men of good report for the Holy Spirit <clears throat> whom we may appoint over this business. Right. And you'll notice that it, they gave that responsibility <clears throat> to the church, and this saying pleased the whole church, didn't it say that? Mm -hmm. Well, the whole church seems to me to be everybody. <clears throat> yeah. And I doubt that the only people making suggestions about who should do this were just men. Mm. I'm sure that there were probably godly women yeah. doing that as well. <clears throat> so. Because it's, almo <clears throat> it's almost a... You mm. only you are going to know your congregation best, right? If your congregation is mm. is spending time together and growing together and really trying to do all the things that you're reading in the Word, <coughs> you're going to see the needs and see the people that are starting to stand out with these you know godly qualities. Right, right. Now, I know that we have some um, very strong traditions about men's business meetings. And I would, I would encourage us, you know, yes, the husband is the head of the wife. Yes, there's a different role for men. I get that. I understand that from Scripture. Mm -hmm. However, <clears throat> I think that a pattern that, that, that rises above that in Scripture is that leadership in the church is supposed to be spiritual. 
Um, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, Galatians 6, 1. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual people, but as unto carnal, as unto babes in Christ. For, uh, you know, whereas there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not yet carnal and walking after the manner of men? 1 Corinthians hmm. chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. So, spiritual people need to be the leaders in the church. Amen. Now, in some cases, we have small congregation where there's a bunch of men to get together. Yeah. And the big majority of them are not spiritual people. And yet they're propo proposing to lead the church, which is ridiculous as far as the, mm. the Bible is concerned. <clears throat> there may be one or two spiritual men who may not meet the qualifications of leadership. Yeah. But if those men are wise and they they, you know, consult even maybe before they get into the meeting, uh, spiritual women who have the the Bible in them and they have the vision of the Great Commission in them. Yeah. And <clears throat> they might say in the men's business meeting, you know, we've talked with these ladies that you all respect and they they support this idea. They would like us to do this, and we're behind this because Scripture says, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're assuming here that there are some men of God that can assert themselves. Right. But, but the idea of a bunch of unspiritual men fighting yes. over everything and leading a church is what has destroyed many of our small congregations. Yeah. And it's certainly not the model we see in here. Now, there's, there's certainly a danger. There, there's no precedence in Scripture for appointing a bunch of deacons when there's not elders, and these deacons become de facto decision elders, makers yeah. or elders. That's yeah. unscriptural completely. Yeah. <clears throat> but there will always be a need for people to agree to serve in ministry. We, we just have to say that God's desire is for a congregation to progress to where there are people who are qualified to be elders and people qualified to uh, be deacons, and those people are put in place. But even godly elders, mm -hmm. pardon me for saying this, but they're dumb if they don't touch base with other spiritual people in the church, including women who are spiritual, but, and confer with them about let's say they're things not being that they intend. Wise. No, I think that's dumb. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that that most godly elders do that. Oh, they, sure. They, yeah. they speak to to all people that they respect. We have a number of women in this church that are great women. They're highly respected by all of us. And they're good, godly men. And, and, and you know, wisdom is that we, we say to these people, this is the direction we want to go, and we think this is a great yeah. work for the Lord. Can you see any problem with this? And that kind of thing. So I think maybe I'm meandering too much, but I think... We make too much in the in the modern church about decision making, because yeah. many of the decisions that we're actually talking about are mundane decisions. Most of the time, the the decisions that need to be made by the spiritual leaders, the elders, the ministers, the the ones that are people of the book, you mm -hmm. know. <clears throat> these are spiritual decisions about people's souls, about what is being taught about uh, the nature of the church's work and the spiritual outreach, the spiritual decisions. Those are the ones that need to be made by the spiritual leaders. Other right. decisions can be made by anybody. And I think that's a lot of that question. It is, it is a difficult question to answer. It I is mean, very difficult. You know, but I think a lot of the reason people ask this is they're, they genuinely want what's best for their congregation. And they're frustrated, probably. Probably. And they don't know what's best and what direction mm -hmm. to go. Because as we can see, the Bible doesn't give a lot of do step A, step B, step C right. for a lot of these processes. Well, what happened uh, in those 14 years in the Galatian churches when Paul was working and building them up and encouraging them before they had elders and deacons? Yeah. <clears throat> and the nice thing is they at least had you know the apostles to still kind of look to and reach out to. Well, see, you've hit on it because there was somebody with the spiritual knowledge and insight right. that they looked to. Paul does that same thing with Stephanus. Mm -hmm. He says, y'all, you don't have elders, but you need to look to Stephanus and people like that. Yeah. 
and submit willingly to them. And so then you know, we, could, we could branch off mm -hmm. into, okay, so then do you make sure you have a godly preacher and look up to them? or You should, if, but if that's hard, but you should, yeah, yes. You know, you're in one of those congregations that you don't have a preacher and you've had a rotation of men. Do you find a nearby congregation and ask their assistance? But then you're, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of things yeah. that you really worry about. Well, and you think about if, he, if the, a young preacher, really young, who comes into a congregation and is just new to ministry and he's, he's zealous and everything, but he doesn't have much life experience, he's certainly going to provide a lot of spiritual leadership. But if he's wise, he will go to older people, older men and women, and he will consult with them and he will, you know, sure. pray with them and he'll try to lead by consulting those people and, and including those people. Yeah. So kind of to answer these questions and to wrap it up and to pull things together, maybe with what they can take away, yeah. is the Bible doesn't give us hard and fast answers to these sort of questions. But what we can see is the leadership of the church needs to be spiritual leadership. Right. If there are physical questions, where's the money going to go? Who's going to mow the lawn? Are we going to paint the room? you can probably consult just about anyone who has some input and probably some good information. Mm -hmm. You're going to see people in your congregation with those uh, skills arise, much like they saw the men who were able to serve and you but know, take to, care of But to avoid uh, division, try to reach some consensus on those things. Sure. Yeah. And if you don't have spiritual men, maybe that's a good place to start. Absolutely. With, maybe we should start building up our spiritual leaders and find ways to And do there's that. no scriptural precedence for appointing deacons yeah. without elders that I can see. Yeah. So there we go. Hopefully that's useful. Um, if you have a specific thing in your congregation and you're really wanting to ask about it, maybe it's not something to address in a video, but we'd love to try to walk through that with you and give you some advice on what direction to go. Uh, as best we can find in the scripture. So thanks again for these Amen. questions. Thanks again, Dan, for your time. And we'll see y'all again next week.